Hello and welcome to the hearing. I'm John. And from Chicago's North Side, I'm Scotto. And before we get to this week's album, we've got some listeners submitted on the hearing for once. Um, <laughs> this is from John Phillips on Facebook. Ozzy comes up with the melodies. Bob Daisley and Geezer in Sabbath wrote all the lyrics. So that answers that question. Um, Randy might have been a better lead player if the accident hadn't happened. Uh, agreed. Um, of I course. think it was just a matter of time. He, he, for those who don't know, he passed away in a airplane accident at 27 um, after the second album. So, yeah, I, I think he would have grown, obviously, after that. Um, he goes on to say, As I write this, I'm waiting to hear if you bring up the controversy in 2002 when <laughs> Sharon Osbourne had Bob and Lee, Bob Daisley and Lee Kerslake, the drummer, uh, performance is removed and replaced by Mike Borden and Robert Trujillo, who were playing in Ozzy's band at the time. They have since been put back. He added later, um, I forgot to add why they were taken off. Bob and Lee sued, sued over royalties. They lost. Um, so yeah, Sharon had the rhythm section replaced on the record because they sued for royalties. Well, I mean, weren't they also the songwriters too? Yeah, yeah. Um, Sharon is notoriously, uh, cutthroat. Um, yeah. And also interesting that it was those two, cause, um, Borden and Trujillo have a bit of a reputation. They're kind of, um, they put, they do a lot of session work in, in yeah. metal. Um, for those who get the reference, they're kind of the Sly and Robbie of metal. Um, <laughs> they're Sly and Robbie are a reggae ba- rhythm section to play with a lot of people, um, do a lot of session work. Anyway, on to this week's album, continuing the 80s metal with 1984's Love It First Sting by the Scorpions. Scorpions, or sorry, by Scorpions. There's no the. Um, Send that out this week. Um, <laughs> Why not? It's, it's just, I even checked the album cover. It's just Scorpions. Yeah. Scorpions are a German heavy metal band formed in Hanover in 1965. Yes, they go back that far. By guitarist Rudolf Schenker, who are best known uh, for featuring some of the greatest guitarists in the genre, including Rudolf's brother Michael and Uli John Roth, as well as for their songs Rocky Like a Hurricane and Wind of Change. Fortunately, only the former of those songs are on Love at First Sting, which is the band's ninth studio album. It was released on March 27th, uh, 1984, on Harvest EMI in Europe. And on Mercury, Mercury in the U.S., produced by Dieter Dirks and features Klaus Meine on vocals, Rudolf Schenker on rhythm and lead guitars and backing vocals, Matthias Jobs on lead and rhythm guitars, uh, Francis Burkholz on bass and Moog Taurus pedals, bass pedals, um, and Herman Rarbo on drums. Reminder, I don't edit any songs into our episodes for copyright reasons, but down in the description... You'll find love it for, links to Love It First Thing on Spotify and YouTube, so you can follow along if you'd like. On to track one, Bad Boys Running Wild. Love the insane lead work, lead guitar yeah. playing at the beginning of this one. It just kind of jumps into the album nicely. Oh, yeah, very nice. Uh, it's much heavier than most hair metal of the time uh-huh. i mean it's not metallica but it's it's heavier than van halen definitely well they got tagged as hair metal uh, a lot because they had a couple of big hits on this album and admittedly they did like their spandex um but they like they, their spandex they like their ballads they yeah. i mean the hair metal was justified i think well and then but their roots are in the 70s you know they most of their albums they had like eight seven or eight albums released in the 70s yeah, I had no idea they went back that far. Yeah. You know? I mean, they were a 70s hard rock band who kind of jumped onto the metal thing. Um, but this one's got a great groove. I love how present the bass is. It's a nice, simple riff, but it works. Love the big chorus, arpeggios. And Klaus's voice has been uh, not a revelation because I, I knew this album very well in the 80s, but it's been nice to go back. I love how his voice can be kind of big and operatic and very 80s, but also very dirty. Yeah. He's got a great growl with all of that big operatic stuff. And I've gained a new respect for Francis Burkholz. I didn't really notice him back in the day. I don't know if maybe I just wasn't paying attention to the bass or if maybe this is a remaster, but his parts are very simple but nicely tasteful. Um, love the vocal I was going to say, the rhythm section does not really jump out to me, like on the, the listens I've had of it. You know, it's just, it's so, the, the, the lead work and the vocals 
just takes so much of the focus. I don't know oh, yeah. if it's the mix oh. or if it's just how over the top they are. And then also Francis and, and Herman didn't overplay. They're very tasteful. You know, mm. they didn't show off. But if you you pay, I was really paying attention to them, and then they they support beautifully. Um, they allow the the lead guitar and the vocals to grab all the attention. Um, love the vocal the harmonies right for the solo. Um, the the song kind of made me chuckle a little bit. The vocals, because you can really hear the German. Oh yeah, yeah. Klaus's accent is very thick. It more than any other song I've ever heard of theirs. This one, you're running wheeled, you know. Yeah. I think maybe another way. We... Um, maybe because Winds of Change is the one that everybody knows. It was like six years later. Maybe his accent had right. calmed. Um, but yeah, nice gymnastic solo, like the gang vocals at the end. Um, throughout the, I didn't notice his accent on any particular song. It's just kind of there throughout the album. I tell you, only this one. The other really? ones, I think. Yeah, the other ones, I think he pulls it off. I mean. You know, mm-hmm. he could be of any country, hmm. but this one you hear the German. It's very like you know, get out of there, we. I, I Klaus's accent to me is always front and center. Um, <laughs> on to track two, "Rock You Like a Hurricane." I've never heard this one before. <laughs> <laughs> this one is, I think, a close second to "Crazy Train." Ah, uh, well, probably not that bad. I could, I could, I could sit through it, you know. Mm-hmm. It is a, again a good song, horribly overplayed though. Um, the riff is just classic. Love the harmonized leads at the beginning. Um, yeah, the riff's just amazing. Yeah, and the effect on the snare. At first, it's this kind of digital reverb. It actually sounds like a synthesizer, and it's just yeah. in the first half of the verse. Um, and right. then in the last. It's- Last verse, it's this backwards reverb that is just huge. Um, nice guitar stabs on the right during the second part of the of verse two as well. Solo is nicely composed. Um, not a lot of notes on this one just because I know it so damn well. Right, it almost goes without saying. It's it's really good pop metal. Uh, yeah. You have this entire range of movements from the really quiet verse in the beginning to the brief but driving beat in the end. So, I mean, it's a complete package. I and, wouldn't pick it as my strongest on the album, nah, though, but... No. It's, it's a solid song. Um, yeah. And, and they were, you know, this wasn't really a thing in metal, but, you know, this came became a thing in alternative later, but they were really on the forefront of Quiet, Loud, Quiet. Hmm. You know, they did well, I don't quiet. know about that, because you, you already had Metallica, you know, that's kind true, of that's true. taking the prog... Uh, approach to it back then in 84 though hmm yeah i'm trying to think when ride the lightning was might have been around the same time slightly before maybe yeah probably probably around the same time yeah yeah because that's this is really where the line maybe this is where the pixies got it from maybe pixie the pixies got it from metal because <laughs> they're the ones who I get the... I, I always think it goes back to Prague, honestly maybe <laughs> maybe these guys um, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying Metallica or the Scorpions invented it. Um, I don't know where it came from, but, you know, the Pixies are the ones who always get the credit for it. And yeah. then, you know, then, of course, Nirvana took it. And... Or Hayden's Surprise Symphony. Yeah. <laughs> fair point, fair point. <laughs> it's just really just dynamics. Um, on to track three, I'm Leaving You. This is my pick for weakest. Um, I mean, Schenker writes some... <laughs> so again? I know, I was just laughing. Uh, Schenker writes some great riffs. Generally, he writes all the music. Class writes the lyrics with the occasional ch- dish to help. Occasionally, others chip in on the lyrics, but you know, usually it's Klaus and Rudolph. Um, Schenker writes some great riffs. Um, like the solo right at the beginning. Um, good groove, but it gets a little repetitive. And, and the bridge just kind of comes out of nowhere. Doesn't really relate musically to the rest of the song. Reminds me a lot of Boston, which yeah. I don't think is a good thing. Yeah, I can honestly. hear that. <laughs> it's filler. Yeah, it might be my pick for weakest, too, because mm. it's just... Uh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just realized I changed my favorite late earlier, you know, a couple hours after I had to adjust that. <laughs> just want to make sure that's correct in my notes. Okay, um, on to track four. Uh, coming home, 
love the um nice calm beautiful you know arpeggio in the beginning it fades in really nicely klaus's voice for a heavy metal singer has incredible dynamics i, I was not happy to be hearing a ballad and like you were know, thinking it was a ballad when the mm. first section came in like well after that song now we've got a ballad on top of this too and then uh then it kicked in i was like oh thank god but he can go from a whisper <laughs> to a scream and a lot of metal vocalists can't do that they're kind True. of on 11 all the time yeah he's a very very broadway show tune kind of guy i think <laughs> okay <laughs> um well yeah a lot of the, the the music here you know it's this whole we're wild guys well, you know theatricality was a thing. part of metal in the 80s yeah you know that was that was a big part of it um this is and actually also the only the topic of this song hmm? i do hate the topic of the song however I think they were one of the first to do it, you know. It's, it's... Well, I mean, I guess American Band was probably the first one well, to do yeah. it, but <laughs> yeah. But write what you know. This is, this is before Home Sweet Home, yeah, and of course Wanted Dead or Alive. Every band writes about being on the road. Uh, it's a write what you know thing, you know, because they spend so much time on the fucking road. Could you um, imagine though a poet when you're writing poems? Damn, it's tough writing poems. <laughs> I don't think they say it's difficult to do the thing. It's, you know, being <laughs> they, that the whole chorus is, you know, performing is like coming home. Yeah, that's that's true. He's doing it. It's just, and we're going to rock everybody. And yeah. <laughs> being on stage is the fun part. That's that's what every road song is about. The being on stage part is great. That's what you're there for. It's all it is, the shit in between that's torture. It is kind of one of their spinal tap moments on oh, this yeah. album. And there, it's this, an overdone you know, topic, I'll admit. It's like, you know, uh -huh. but I mean, at the time it wasn't though. Yeah, yeah this is a little bit. This this. Is, yeah, bef way before you know the others. Um, the, right, this... this is a year before Home Sweet Home. Okay, and I think two years before Dead or Alive, or maybe three even. But also, Bob Seger did this in like late seventies, early eighties with Turn oh, the Page. Oh yeah, I forgot about Turn the Page. Yeah, American Band, like every rock band, writes American about being band on the is road. A, is be the best one though, because it's like. Yeah. We're, you know, a bunch of pirates, you know, just fucking raiding. That's their life. <laughs> they write about their life. Um, this song also yeah. has the only synth I noticed on the album. Um, it's during the quiet part. It's just this low uh, pad. I think it's probably Francis on the Taurus. Um, Did Crossfire have a riff too, or a keyboard too? Not that I noticed, but but maybe. maybe um, um, Love had the fade. It fades right before it gets loud. Because it starts kind of quiet and mellow, and then it gets suddenly loud. Great groove. Again, very present bass. Nice, insistent kicks. Again, Herman never shows off, but he just holds down the great groove brilliantly. Very Phil Rudd in that sense. Um, Love the guitars playing you know, the lead along with I Know For Me It Is Like Coming Home. Um, and then the tonality changes on the bridge. It goes a little minor, which is a nice touch. Because the the the, you know, the the heavy part is generally very upbeat and major and you know happy, because that's where they get to be on stage. <laughs> it's the structure of the song. The beginning, the slow mellow part is like all the waiting and you know the setup and all of this, you know the shit between shows. Then it gets loud. That's where they're on stage, and having a blast. Um, and rocking. On to track five, the same thrill. Um, well, I like the beginning. It's almost kind of a military drum part. Um, and then we get a punk song. Yeah, I like this one a lot. This might be my pick for strongest because this, this, I mean, this is what I expect from or want from Scorpions. Mm -hmm. almost said the Scorpions. This is what I want from Scorpions. Mm -hmm. I want them to ACDC this motherfucker. <laughs> oh, this is, it kind of reminds me of Crocus, maybe, a Ballroom Blitz. Wow, I haven't thought of Crocus's cover of that and since probably the 80s. I only really listened to the original. Um, <laughs> wow, I totally forgot they covered that. Yeah. Well, um, but this is, again, punk song, great groove, yelled vocal. All of the vocals, he doesn't sing in the entire song. He just yells. Yeah, um, great, <laughs> that's what I want. Great gang vocals in the second chorus. Love how the riff comes in on the bridge. And the end just gets incredibly chaotic. Um, yeah. <laughs> on to track six, Big City Nights. This was almost my favorite. Um, 
It's an, it's just been one of my favorites of theirs since the de- back in the day. Great riff. Um, both a rhythm riff and a lead riff at the same time. Because it starts off with the chord progression, which is a great riff. And then the bo- the melody comes in, like the vocal melody. And all of the dynamics in Klaus's voice really show up on this one. Um, great anthemic chorus. Um, and then it just kind of stops down for the bridge. I think this solo is Rudolph because it's on the left. Okay. Um, and I like how the lead just kind of overtakes the song at the end of the lead guitar. For me, this is just too repetitive. Um, I, I think it needed like a closing section or, or a larger closing section at mm. least. You know, or, or I mean, more of a middle section to stretch it out, uh-huh. and then then a larger closing section to finish it. Yeah. It just feels like it's mostly the same from beginning to end. It's it's fairly consistent, yeah. There's not a lot of dynamic change in this one. Um, not a lot of left turns. Um, on to track seven, As Soon As The Good Times Roll. This one gets interesting, because the verse yeah. is almost reggae. Right. I like started liking this at the beginning. It's a straight-up hard rock song. Then you get this like, weird reggae, which I thought was just going to be a middle section. But the, I think the downside was the middle section just pretty much lasts for the well, rest of the song. That's the verse. And, I, you know, yeah. that's that's the verse riff. Um, love the bass line. Um, love, I just like that groove that they fall into. The chorus where it becomes a standard hard rock song gets kind of, is kind of boring to me. I think it's a bit weak after that verse. Um, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they, they kind of drop. Well, even they keep the reggae even during the chorus. Like I thought, it just kept going through. Once they they bring that reggae beat in, well, on the actual it's there all the way. After, you know, as soon as the good times roll, that part is in the chorus. It's a straightforward hard rock song, and then they come back to the reggae. Um, and it was an, it changed needed change of pace. It just changed, you know. Um, but I like how they stayed with that even after verse two, all the way through the solo. Um, and I love the dissonant lead guitar in verse two. Um, it's really just those two sections. There's really no bridge. It's interesting because it's like a weird, you know, police song. You know, a little heavier yeah. than what the police did. I mean, of course, the this verses, 84, yeah. So the police were were ginormous. Yeah. Um, yeah, the verse is very police, um, and it is eighty four. So maybe they were. We, you know, this is the same year as. Um, I think it's the same year as uh, Moving Pictures. So, you know, Rush went a little police with Vital Signs. Maybe they went a little police with this one. <laughs> you know, Neil has admitted Vital Signs was an attempt to sound like the police. Wow. Uh, maybe they were doing that with this. Um, on to track eight, Crossfire. This is my favorite. Um, love the, the kind of military drums at the beginning. And this great lead riff into verse one that comes back later. Um, it's another case where the, there's that lick in Crazy Train. I know one of the Aussie songs um, that I I just want to see transcribed because I can't figure out what they're doing. This riff is another I, one like that. Um, I think it was Crazy Train, yeah. Um, and love the vocal melody. It was a common lyrical thing theme during the Cold War. We don't want to die. Right. At first, I was kind of thinking, well, you guys are in West Germany. I don't know. If, I mean, if shit goes down, I don't know how much of a choice you're going to have. But yeah. then I thought they're talking about fighting in proxy wars probably mm-hmm. and just the general state of the world at the time literally every big artist at this point in time wrote a song like this lyrically yeah Th- this is probably the most broadway of all the songs on the album i mean it's it's very it's very either you know sticks or it's you very know. dramatic yeah. <laughs> um, love, love the just big drum break in the middle, and then they bring that riff back. The kit sounds huge because there's this, he just plays that opening, and the, I don't know what they did in the studio, but his kit just gets bigger, bigger sounding. Um, and I'm glad because I thought the first part did go on a little too long, but I, and I'm glad they had a different section in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, nice slid notes at the start and end of the solo. We just give it a little chill up the spine. Um, fade maybe takes a little bit too long um but yeah it's just this i just love the you you call it broadway i just love the the drama of it all Um, on to track the andrew lloyd (laughs) weber on to track nine the final track 
still loving you. This is the proper ballad. This is like a Led Zeppelin kind of thing. I, I like this one. Um, love the verse arpeggios, and there's an arpeggio on each side. It's it's very House of the Rising Sun. Um, yeah. Now that you mentioned it, very babe, I'm going to leave you. Yes, exactly. Um, love how soft the vocal starts. Um, Klaus really, I mean, he he gets a lot of credit, but I don't think he gets enough for being like one of the greatest vocalists in in metal. Um, he was on par with Dio. Or still, I don't know if he, I mean he's still with us. I, I'm gonna guess he probably still is, but I mean it's been a while. Um, I forget now. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I... Oh, I know Klaus is still with us, but I mean I haven't oh. heard him since. You know, when to change. But love the solo in the middle of the verse. There's this just in the middle of the verse. They just Rudolph just takes the solo. I thought you were asking about Dio, and unfortunately, Dio okay. is no longer. Well, no, he passed away years ago. Um, yeah. But um, love the solo in the middle of the verse. It just kind of stops off in the middle of the verse, and Rudolph takes a solo. <laughs> um, and then how the verse, how the, that solo, it starts with this clean, very kind of jangly sound, almost kind of 60s. And yeah. then in the middle, he turns on the overdrive, and it gets very 80s. Like, <laughs> the tone of the guitar jumps like 20 years in the middle of the solo. Yeah, they're definitely covering the spectre, but yeah, I like that that it, it uh, the contrast, you know. It, it's I a think pa- that's classic, missing from a lot of the other songs. It's a classic power ballad because yeah. it starts soft and mellow, and then they kick in the distortion on the chorus, and it's just it doesn't get faster, doesn't get you know up tempo, but it's just big. Um. Love how the vocal trails off after the arpeggio picks up in chorus one. Really gives me the trails. It's the way the vocal just gets gradually quieter. And I think there are like five guitar parts on verse two. <laughs> like I've heard them do it live. There was a concert MTV voice that liked to play a lot back in the day. Um, so they pull it off with two guitars, but on, on the album, there's like four or five there. Um, love the loud bit at the end of chorus two, which could be the bridge they kind of just extend the chorus a little bit yeah um you know yeah i've heard your pride and i know what you've been through that part um and the lead, the lead at the end rudolph just goes off <laughs> yeah it's the perfect ending yeah so do you recommend it i would say uh no to this one because okay. i mean i liked about half of it but the other half i just felt was just I mean, it was just too repetitive for me. Mm. It feels like they started making a metal album and, and forgot somewhere along the way just <laughs> put too much pop in there. I definitely recommend it. Um, I, and I'm biased. I loved this one back in the day, so a lot of it maybe is nostalgia. But to me, it's another classic from the 80s that still holds up really nicely. Um, of And then that's it for... Um, um, Love it first thing by the Scorpions. Until next time, we'll be reviewing Fantasizer by Freeze Pop. I think this is the fastest we'll ever be we'll be getting to an album. Really? Because I thought we did. I thought we did one on the week of release. I can't remember. Maybe if it was a Marion Call. No, or... Marion Call was pushed back a week because I mm. lost power. Oh. The plan. I we s- were gonna do Marion Call that quickly. I swear, oh, you maybe you're right. Yeah, I think the plan was to do Marion Call that quickly. Like, it came out on Tuesday. We were going to review it Wednesday night. But then I had a two-day power outage. So <laughs> this is the fastest we'll be getting to something. It comes out on the 6th. We'll be recording our review on the 7th. And I'm flipping the release order next week. Should have mentioned that on Zombie Takeout. Um, so the hearing will be coming up for us just to get that out as quickly as possible. And if I didn't say it, we'll be reviewing Fantasizer by Freeze Pop. Um the um the one band in my top 10 my current top 10 that we haven't gotten to yet now yeah i remember you saying i think it was off air you said about your top 10 mm-hmm. and uh the 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 phrase just horrified me because i tried thinking of what my top 10 would be i'm a compulsive and... list maker so i always have those top lists i just can't do it and i understand I... a lot of people have trouble with that i don't you know i don't that's fine if it's not your thing <coughs> excuse me I just have a, a this habit of making lists of things. Just way too hard for me to do it. I was like, oh, well, I mean, so is Redding make it? Of course, yeah, Redding has to make it. And then I, I'm like 20 deep, like, okay, 
someone's got to go of people that had to make it. <laughs> I also have a particular rule. This is why I call it my current top ten. It's all currently active artists. Oh. I cut out anybody who's retired. <laughs> or oh. Dead. Okay. That might make life easier for me. I might be able to do that. So, just to, since we're talking about it, uh, 1 to 10, Marion Call, um, Bandmade, Punch Brothers, Bad Religion, St. Vincent, Pillows, Freeze Pop, MC Front A Lot, Cake, Yannicka. So, Man, Freeze I'm Pop feel... will be the last one we'll be reviewing. Um, I'm feeling that. the stress level just as you're, you're doing it, you know? <laughs> Well, that was just trying to remember it offhand because I don't have it, you know. The second half gets a little touchy. Like, the second half isn't nailed down quite as well as the first in terms of the order. I mean, I'd feel I'd feel awful if I forgot somebody. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a matter of forgetting. It's just kind of who's in there at the moment. It does tend to be a bit in flux at times. The bottom That's half. true. That's the, true. Yeah, you know, the top half is very solid. Um Anyway, until next time, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are.